and out for the trash. Is this a pressure washer? It looks like some of us having an issue. Let's pop the air cleaner off of it. It turns. You want to see if we bring it home and um, see either what it failed for or if we can revive it? I don't know what year it is. It doesn't look all that old. Sometimes what happens is they get put out and they freeze and crack. But judging the fact that the air cleaner is off, I have a feeling it's just that do not run. Let's go find out. Hey guys, and how's it going? I grabbed this, it was about a week later now from the side of the road, somebody gave up on it and put it out to the free pile. So I figured it'd make for a good video to see what happened to it, why they threw it out, if we can bring it back to life. The air cleaner, looks like somebody took the air filter out of it and it had a plastic housing, I'm guessing that goes over the top of the ignition switch right here and blocks this off. They threw it out complete, they put the, the wand and the hose with it. All the bits are up top. It looks like that one is probably the common one is being used. In our area, it freezes during the winter time. And a lot of times the pumps do not get drained out of water and they freeze and they crack. Hey look, it even comes with a cup holder. <laughs> All right, so let me get you in a stand. Let's get into it. Let's figure out what happened to it and see if we can bring it back to life. I guess we'll start with the basics. oil on the dirty side it's got oil in it see what it has in the fuel tank eh, very little on the bottom it smells pretty bad though I Mark starting to guess that might be what our issue is get that uh, cover off the carp Yeah, get a cleaner out of it. I think. You see a bunch of corrosion. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. Let's get this cover out of our way. We've got two screws right here. Let me get them out of the way. We can get the cover. Lift it up. I see some crap on the end. Let me get you closer. Yeah, judging by that little residue that's coming out of there. Looks like either the float needle got stuck and it overflowed with gas. Let's get the bowl off of it. That's really going to tell us. Actually, I'm going to take that carburetor right off of there. The nut for the bowl has some weird rubber looking washer on it. I have a feeling it might've been leaking and somebody tried to fix it, thinking that that's what the leak was. Let's see if I get the fuel out of it anyway. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, I wouldn't say it's terrible. It looks pretty decent. But this way we can flip it up and take a look at the bottom of the carburetor it's kind of hard to get your get you guys up underneath there you know some of you got big heads all right we got a couple of 10 mils holding it get rid of that spring So you wiggle these out. There's one. We 
There's the other. That's what I was talking about. Like, what is that? <laughs> Never seen that before. All right, let's get that off of there and take a look. Get the rest of the gas out of it. There it goes. I don't see water in there neither. It's like somebody just got frustrated probably with it overflowing or leaking. Yeah, it's like a piece of tire rubber or something. It's not even tight. There's the rest of the gas coming out of it. Well, I guess it was an attempt at fixing it. Looks clean. That feels like it's dropping down way too far though. Like it wouldn't shut off the fuel. It's just a guess right now. Let's get the pin out of it. Get the float out. Rubber tip on it. Sometimes I've seen people take an air gun and it won't have a rubber tip on the, that's called the needle and that's a seat. Sometimes the other way around, the needle will be solid like brass or the color of that metal. And then there's an O-ring or a seal that goes down in the seat. People take an air gun and they shoot the air gun this way instead of this way and it blows that out of there. I do not see that being a problem at the moment. It does still have what's left of the original gasket on there but it doesn't look very healthy I wonder if that's all or is that like a silicone or something hard to say that is in definite, definite need of that carb actually doesn't look bad though I expected to see it full of crap, and it's not. Then again, that whole machine doesn't really look all that bad. Let's get the dump the gas out of it. What's left of it? So there's little ports on the side right there. That is where the gas is drawn up in the reservoir fuel. This is this is full of fuel. This is screwed up inside there. So that is protruding into the bowl. It draws gas up through there, through that jet in the center at a metered rate. Then up through the center of the carburetor. And as air is flowing through the carburetor, through this way, when air is flowing through the carburetor, it kind of works like I ever see somebody take a straw and shoot an air gun across it. it creates a vacuum and it draws the fluid up and out through it. Well, that's what's happening in, inside the carburetor. But that jet meters how much fuel comes through and it's trying to uh, dial in the uh, correct air fuel mix. A lot of times when it's either hun, so you got to run with the choke on, that process is getting clogged either in here, in that jet, in the little side ports. Any of those can cause it. But this looks pretty clean. The seal actually looks pretty good going around where the bowl is. So I'm going to go just blow this out and I'm going to bother putting in the pressure washer. The pressure washer, the um, ultrasonic cleaner. Just take an air gun. We're going to go blow out some of the passages. We're going to reassemble the float on there. We'll flip it over and make sure the yeah, float is working, uh, turning on and off.
So I grabbed a, a newer carburetor just to kind of show you what it should look like. See that fiber washer that's on there? I don't know what's in this carb. Might be nothing. And see how that one sits. I think what happened when they stacked that rubber piece on there and what we talked about earlier, the dimension of those little ports that are on the side, those, I wonder if between the rubber, actually let's put the bowl on upside down. So if we put that on upside down and then we stack the rubber on it, I'm wondering if they, they ended up blocking those ports right off. When they did that, I think that might be a good possibility what happened. He ended up pulling the nut so far down that it wasn't able to draw fuel through it because they were not exposed. And that was in the bowl. I wonder if that just sat up so high. But we are going to omit that. We'll clean that crap off of there. See if we could steal this one actually. Is that the right size? Looks like it. Let's go put that together with it. And because I know it's going to come up and the questions people are going to ask, why does that nut not have it in there? On this style, it's built into the base of the carb. So same idea. It just draws it in through the side there, not through the, the bowl nut. And it'll have the same kind of jet. It's a little hard to see. But there's the jet still up inside the carb on this one. Let's put that back together. It's a very simple carburetor. There's not much to it. Actually, let's get caught by the float. And the biggest thing that needs to happen is for this on off switch to work lack of better terms on off switch so the gas comes in through here the carburetor is upside down she sits like that so gas comes in through here leaks around that needle and seat when the float is down as the float floats up shuts the gas off maintains a you know, about two thirds of the way up the float ball maintains that fuel level that's in there. So I kind of want to make sure that that is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So while the float is down, I'm going to blow in through there. I can hear air going through. I'm going to flip it over and it's shut off. So I was doing what I want it to do. I'm going to go put the bowl on it and I did not clean that crap off the end of there yet. I'm going to go take care of that. One other thing that needs to happen, that bowl crimps down on the seal that is right there. So there needs to be a little bit of an air gap on this bowl. This bowl actually looks like it's kind of sunk in a little bit. I'm just gonna go tap that down. I'm gonna grab a hammer. I'm just gonna kind of recess that a little bit. It seems like somebody really cranked down on that and the bowl is a little on the deformed side. It's not pushing on that the seal very good. That's a little better. Yeah, I wasn't getting a uh, crush on that seal. You can see the gap. It's going to draw it right back down in again when you put the nut on it. But it needs like a, a spring-loaded preload. much better about that than that.
Well, while it doesn't have a gas in it, I'm actually going to go change the oil. It does not have a drain plug on it. And it's becoming a common trait. You just drain it through the fill hole. Lot mowers are getting to be that way too. You kind of tip them out. You, sometimes you can use a uh, little suction pump. But this pretty much does it, of course. Let's see if I can prop this up. Dump the whole thing on the floor. We'll let that do its thing. And we'll fill her back up. Well, that's little drains. Take a quick peek at the pump. This one's a fairly simple one. This is for kind of the same idea that the uh, we talked about in the carburetor, where you take a straw and you shoot air across the top of the straw. It'll it'll draw fluid up and out. This is an external port for running a cleaner, and uh, as the fluid goes through, it draws in through here. That's what that little cup holder looking thing on the side for. It's more for like a soap or a detergent of some sort would get attached to that port. I don't know what it uses for a piston pump, whether it's just one singular plunger that moves up and down as the engine spins or if it has three. Depends on the quality of them. I have not had one of these really cheap ones apart in a long time. This is a pressure relief or a pressure adjustment on it. That little jam nut and set screw in the top of it. And just fluid in, fluid back out under higher pressure. Actually, what is that? I wonder if that's the... Uh, the tap for the uh, the mix to go in. I see two different spots, one there and one there. Not sure. You're not supposed to run them with any without having water going through them. The last uh, decent pressure washer that was a friend of mine's. I got called out on that one for firing it up without any uh, water going to it. That pressure washer <laughs> was run about tried to be run about a hundred times without water going to it so on that one, particular one i wasn't going to do any more damage to it than was already to it let's take a quick look at what's going on there's a screen there it looks like it's a little bit of crud on it. i'm going to probably hit that with an air gun It'll blow some of the crap out of there have a date on it i don't see one I, it looks really decent. I'm gonna say it's probably five years old. And I would think that that probably right there, you take that out. There's probably an Allen or a set screw. The shaft coming out of the engine probably locks it to the pump. That's just a guess on my part, too. All right, let's so flip back over and get some oil in it. And some brand new yard sale oil from the free pile. Top her off. Mobile one. Nothing but the good stuff. These don't really hold all that much. So the air filter that was out of it, you can kind of see where the gas overflowed and came out of the throat of the, the carburetor and contaminated all this. So I think it did sit with bad yeah, there you go. It did sit with bad gas in it at some point and caused that mess. Or it uh, just was flipped on its side, maybe. I'm gonna go wash that out. We'll install that. That's yeah, clean enough. I'm just gonna flip it. The section that was in front of the carb, I'm gonna go make that. It was like that. I'm gonna rotate it 180. Let's go put some gas in it. It's fall here. And pressure washers are gonna get put away. This one's gonna get put away. I have a, a really nice one for here, but I don't have anything for at the house. But it's not gonna get used much. This is Cam 2 Racing Gas at 10 bucks a gallon. But it has no ethanol. And it's like 110 to octane. So I'm just gonna throw some of that in there. We're just gonna pretty much test it, see how it does. And uh, if everything works out okay, it's going to get put away till next spring and get used at my house. And that fuel won't have an issue. Whereas the uh, modern you know, stuff you're putting in your car, 
uh, wood. In my area, uh, non-ethanol fuel is really not available. You can, gotta go about 20 miles to go get it. So, at the end of those hoses, they got some rust on them. The O-rings look okay. I'm actually gonna go clean them up probably with a little bit on a wire wheel and take a little bit of lithium grease and just wipe around those to help with that. Yeah, a little credit you can take an air gun and blow through it. See if any crap comes out of it. It's gonna come out of that one right there. <laughs> yeah, see it's full of water. What will happen in the wintertime around here, they'll leave the hose, people just put away, put it in a garage. And uh, the pump has water in it and the hose has water in it. And it causes them to freeze the gun, same thing. And the components start cracking. Sometimes the hose is okay because the hose is, you know, got some flexibility to it. But the pump, not so much. And the gun, not so much. It'll uh, have a tendency to go crack. What I do, I know I'm getting off track, uh, topic. I have a little fitting that fits an air hose chuck and it has like a tire valve on like you would like for a uh, your car tire it's got a tire chuck on it i just put my tire chuck from my compressor on it like you're filling a tire and i pull the trigger on the gun it blows the whole system out gets all the water out of them and that's why i put them away for the winter time works pretty good i haven't had an issue with it doing it that way and after hitting them with the wire wheel it's a little better huh and just a little bit of that We'll keep them for future. A little on the tip. You always need a little on the tip. And they have little sleeve. Just got a little bit of rust on. See, let's go put a little bit on the threads. Gun goes on the other end. Let's go check that out. See, I'm just gonna throw a little on the threads. Make a mess. And let's go take a look. There's no tip in it. I'm gonna blow some air through that. Make sure that this is clear. Same idea as what we did with everything else. I missed it. Shot rust out. You have to take my word. Blew a little bit of rust out of the center of it. Like I said, what I would do, I'd hold the trigger down and take my little fitting and blow air through it until all the water is dispersed from it and then so I would put it away for the winter time and then again running running it with this fuel or type of fuel that doesn't go bad I also like the stuff that you can buy in the uh, quart cans or the gallon cans at the end of the year I'll, I'll run especially on a lot of small engine stuff little weed whacker kind of things I'll run this through and I'll just leave the fuel in it this stuff seems to hold through a season I've never had a problem uh, running any of this kind of material through it compared to regular fuel with uh, ethanol in it all right, let's go hook a hose to it, see what she does. Let's see if we get any water thrown through the gun. Heard it release the air. <laughs> I think it's coming. There we go, I hear it. Looks pretty clean. That's a good sign. We say ready to fire it up. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave a tip out of it for now. I was gonna go fire it with no tip on it, see how it does. Give her 
The choke should be automatic. You gotta hold the trigger down. Or else it'll kind of hydro lock on you. What do we get? We didn't check for spark or pull the plug, so. <laughs> something wrong with the choke and one thing I talked about when pumps freeze and they were put away that's exactly what happened you can see the crack that's in it and it's just pissing water so unfortunately that's what happened with this one so we put it away for the winter whoops they just shot you in the eye and caused damage to the pump that's too unfortunate and that's why they gave up putting it side of the road it still may work but it's got a crack in the housing. I think I just had one of the plastic nubs on the wrong side of the choke. Let's see what we get now. I bet you want to take that pump apart, don't you? See how it works. So do I. All right, let's go do it. Like I said, I have a feeling there's a, a lock of some sort locking it to the shaft over here. Not positive of that. But let's get these three bolts out of it so you can get the pump just to pull right off of there. See what happens first. <laughs> yeah, like I thought that was gonna work. Boy, somebody already egged that one out on us. Let's see if we can get it to... That's gonna, it's gonna tear on us. been mauled. <laughs> what that? Somebody tried taking it apart before us or were in the factory did they run in with a gun and kind of chew it up? So you get out of there. Let's see if we could take a standard 7 16 I think it is. Quarter inch. Let's see if we could drive that home into there. It's, what was on there is metric. Gotta get a good swing at it. Sound like it went home, right? There we go, we got it. Winner! Loctited too. Looks like it's pretty loose. It'll come right off of there. There's the pistons. They are up top. Okay. Cool. We got three pistons up top. Uh, there's like a rotary. Let's see if we can get this off. Actually, if I unbolt it, then the engine's going to be flopping around. So I'm going to leave it right on there for now. 
Should we get to the pull start? I want to show what, what they do. Let me take the plug out of it. The plug's out of it. And you can see what's happening. <laughs> so there's kind of like a, a cam that's up here, like a wobble cam, and it, it rotates around and pushes, pushes, <laughs> pushes these pistons up and down. And then in the pump side of it, there's like a little one-way valve. It may be these right here. A little one-way valve, so it, one will push water down, and then when it comes back up, uh, a door shuts, so it allows the water to come in, and then forces it along its way. And each one, I don't know if they work in succession of each other, or if they are each doing the same. I don't know one, you know, one brings it to 200 pounds, one brings it to 500 pounds, and the next one brings it to 2,700. I don't know if that's the condition of that or not. Let's see if we can go see where the brake was. It's hard to see with the naked eye. Yeah, so it looked like it froze and cracked right there. That's it right there. It takes it out of the game. Unfortunately, you know, the pressure is so high, it's not like you can go put some uh, putty on there and try to seal it up. Probably try, but it's just going to push it right back out again. Uh, the better attempt would if you were able to put it from the inside. But I'm, I'm not going to end up screwing with it. Let's go pull those out. I believe these are spring loaded. I think. Yeah, so I think each one just works independent of, of the pressure. It's not, I don't think they step each one up like a, think of like an air compressor, single stage, two stage, uh, air compressor, two stage, one piston builds the pressure up to a certain level, then the second one takes over. I think each one of these just contributes to this main line of water going out again. It's whatever push that it gets. So this one, say this one fires down, shoots out, we'll call it an ounce of water. And then the, the door blocks behind it so it can't go. And it goes, piston drops the other way, fills back up again while it's going around. Then the next one takes over, pushes down, contributes whatever it's, water is going to contribute. Uh, once it's done, the plunger plunges it back off again. And then the third one does the same thing. And it's kind of an even pulse to it because each one is, what's uh, 360 divided by <laughs> 120, 120 degrees. Each one is firing at 120 degrees of the circle. So that is what's going on. Again, you could run it. I, I've seen people run them for quite a while. It's just, it's a, a lack of what it's doing and it just you know, really keeps pissing water out through the side of it down there. Yeah. At some point, it, it, you lose more water out of here than you do getting coming out of the, the gun in the front of it. So that's what's inside. For those who want to know, I'm not sure what that is. An anode for corrosion. Why it's made out of that material. Anybody got an answer? I'm waiting. And this is a pressure regulator, so allowing. Uh, I think like so when you you let off the trigger, 
and you, the stream stops. So this is kind of like an override. There's a, a spring with probably a check ball inside here that moves back and it just allows the fluid probably just to run around in a circle. Or it looks like it dumps it dumps back over to the, the main feed coming in. Again, that's just speculation on my part. That's that. Well, guys, I guess as far as I'm going to go, I'm not going to take anything else apart. I just wanted to see what the inside of the pump looked like and might have a little bit better explanation of how the thing operates. So we got to that point. Too bad. I wonder the uh, pressure washer that came with its own cup holder. <laughs> oh, well. Well, now we know why I was throwing out what the issue was. And uh, I don't even know if the owner even knew that part of it failed. It looked like he was probably screwing around the carburetor and uh, tried to get it to run. It was having maybe even problems with uh, the choke setup, how that was operating. That weird nut uh, rubber o-ring they tried making or tire rubber or whatever that is that was on there and i think as we fired it up it seemed like it leaked a, a real little i was noticing a little trickle kind of coming out underneath when i first turned the water onto it and then i was used it more it got worse so i have a feeling it froze on him he didn't even realize that part of it was bad and then uh you know us going later on putting pressure to it i think it kind of pushed whatever debris was blocking that crack the rest of the way out of it and it was really gushing towards the end of it there Oh well, I was hoping to have a will it run <laughs> or repaired for 10 cents uh, free pressure washer video, but it just didn't turn out that way. So I'm going to go through this up my stash for parts. I think the pump is going to be uh, cost prohibitive. I'll check, but uh, I have a feeling that'll be what the issue is. So I'll just keep it for parts. Got a good hose. The wand is decent. The motor seems like it's okay. Uh, possibly if we need to, we could use the uh, carriage of this thing. You know, take the motor off of it and use that platform for something. Maybe even like test beds for machines or motors don't know but for this i think we're done i hope you guys uh, enjoyed yourself and got to go see what's the inner you know, workings of a pressure washer anyway out of it <laughs> and uh till the next one i'll see you then later bye